All right, welcome everyone. This is a Viper Professional Training and Support Webinar. Today's date is January 20th, 2016. This is a Wednesday night webinar. The title of tonight's webinar is Let's Do Some Scalping on Retracements. And as everyone knows that's been to our webinars or our live trading rooms, everything that we say and do at Viper Trading Systems is for educational purposes only. Futures trading, Forex trading, any kind of financial instruments trading involves risk. Therefore, there's always risk of loss. You should only trade discretionary capital, and that is money that you can afford to lose. Nothing said in this webinar, other webinars we might have, our live trading room or anything else with Viper Trading Systems should ever be construed as trading or investment advice. And as always, everyone does trade at their own sole discretion. Any questions on the disclaimer? If not, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. I brought up something for you, just uh, just a little visual so that we can all see what, uh, really when you're looking at trading, if you look at it, it too big, you know, in other words, just, oh my gosh, I've got, you know, four charts up here, where's my trade setups and all that, you can basically be looking at something like this. You know, you're just looking at a, a whole forest full of trees and how could you pick out a particular one? You know, if you wanted to take it home and put it in your yard or something like that, well, you couldn't. I mean, that's look at that. It's just a total forest. That's actually looks like in northern Amazon. Okay, but if you get down to the individual trees, look how beautiful they can be. Now, this is in a different part of the world, obviously, but that's a single tree right there, maybe one beside it, and then you can start seeing the beauty of everything and the simplicity of it. You know, if this was just canopied in you know, this, this total forest, you can't see that beautiful tree, okay? And that's what everybody runs into when they're trading. Because you look at a chart, you look at several charts, and you wonder how do some people see right where to get in those trades, and you might miss them, okay? Now tonight, we're gonna talk a little bit more about scalping, but we're gonna do some trend trading too, because those trades were called live in the room, and I wanna show how those trades were gotten into and how to stay with them also. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this down. I think everybody can see what I was trying to do there, right? And I'm going to go to a simple chart. We took away all the forest and now we're looking at the individual trees on here. Okay, I took all the prices off the chart. They're still there. They're, they're transparent but it's, it's a really good way to look at a chart and see what's really going on. Let me go ahead and make this a little darker even so that you can see it kind of pop out a little bit more. That's kind of a light silver. We'll make it a little bit darker. All right, now you can clearly see by looking at this particular chart, obviously what direction is the trend in at this moment anyway. It's absolutely down, right? But can you also see with Lightning 3 where the swings are that could possibly change the direction? And this is where scalping can come in really handy, okay? Because to, to give you an example, I'm looking at this chart right here. I'm going to go ahead and put one, one other indicator on here because I like my toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead and put my toolbar on right here. And I like no channels and no markers on mine, so I set it as default. We'll go ahead and apply it. Okay, now I see this right here on this chart when I'm looking at it. I see this right here, and I see this right here. And each one of these, a high, a low, a lower high, a much lower. See what I mean? Stepping down, just like this. That went up it, even with that one. That was probably almost one of those breakouts, but not quite. And then it fell off the map. And then it did this. And if you need to see it, just go ahead and draw it because it'll draw with lightning. Okay. Now notice how it's starting to squeeze up here and you've got a higher low right here. So could you be ready to scalp that even? Now this would be more of a little breakout trade. And I'm going to teach those tonight too. So probably shouldn't have called this Let's do some scalping on retracements because we're going to do that. We're going to do some little breakout trades. I'm going to show you how to make some money on just scalping these markets. And then we're going to do some trending like, like I called in the room this morning. 
Okay, uh, Jack, on your question, the auto trader will, it's still a, a work in progress. We're, we're more than likely gonna put that off a little bit because we're gonna be more than likely, you know, porting over to Ninja 8 here in the next few months. Okay, and uh, we've got to port over a lot of indicators, Object Trader, and everything else. So, and we also wanted to test out Object Trader, make sure this last little update has got it run nice and smooth, no pullbacks, things like that, no slowdowns. Okay, and I'll go over some of that. Just remind me in a little bit, and I'll go over the changes that we made to Object Trader. Because if you're astute and you've been watching your Object Trader, you probably notice a few things missing. Okay, but anyway. What I'm talking about here, now this looks to me like an established swing right here. See this, high, low, lower high, and it barely didn't take this out, but that's still pretty much with these 15 range uh, type of swings, pretty much tells you if they take that out, they're probably gonna head up and check here, okay? So you can take those scalps like that if you want to, okay? Now we're gonna talk about some of the retracements and everything once it actually breaks up. Now, if you go over here to the right, I'll show you what's actually gone on. Look at that. Did that break up above there or what? Well, you can tell it did because lightning's following it, right? Now, why would you want to miss out on this trade if you could get that going that nice and high, okay? Because some of these breakout trades like this, and we draw them in the room too, Okay, so that people can take those. You could have put your box just like this if you wanted to. And I'm going to put the dynamic trend on in just a minute. Or you could have put it like this. Oop, let me not move that one. I want to move that one. You could have put it like that. I'm just taking, you know, a little break as soon as it came down and kissed and took off. Right? And those type of scalps like that, you can be amazed if you do a few contracts what they'll actually pay out. Okay? And then let's go ahead and go over here. Now, now what has the trend actually done so far now? What, what, do you, what do you think the trend has actually done now? I'll give everybody a minute to think about that. Right, it changed, didn't it? Okay, now keep in mind that right here, yes, you could actually have literally scalped this also, just like I did down here, we're talking about. For instance, when it broke this swing right across here, couldn't you scalp that? Because those uh, swings that are actually set up with that uh, Lightning 3 are pretty good swings. That means they've been working at it because they're 15 swing strength on there. That's what we keep ours defaulted at, right? Okay, so everybody see, you know, for instance here, you could have made some serious coin and right here you could make some serious coin by just simply trading the uh, lightning swings. Now let's put the uh, dynamic trend on here so we can see what it really is doing. We'll go ahead and put the, the dynamic trend. Only one that kept its name right there. All right. And you can see that you kind of got a little bit of an uptrend, right? Kind of a little bit of an uptrend, but not major, right? Not major as of yet. Let's go ahead and put the prices on here. Let's, let's see what this trade really looked like. Matter of fact, if you want to go ahead and do this one here, because this one up here and it broke here. So let's go ahead and, and just uh, basically put a line at both these trades that we talked about ahead of time, 66. Let's just say that we took the little break, okay, that went up. Let's just say we scalped it. I'm going to change that to blue since it'll be uh, basically a long trade. We'll go ahead and use navy blue. That's fine. All right. And then let's say that here we did a scalp to the downside, and I'll change this one to a red one. We'll just do fire brick on that one. All right. Couldn't that be two trades that would probably, with most people's accounts, with say, let's just say three contracts. There's more than likely easily 300 and there's 300. That's $600 on two very easily calculatable trades. Would scalping be good enough if a person could do that? 
like I said in the room this morning, there's there's several of our traders that do nothing but scalping. Now, I don't want to talk you out of doing the trending that we do in the room in the morning either, okay? But if you walk in the in the in into your trading room and you see that the market's been going pretty well sideways, then what are you doing? You're going to scalp, right? You're going to basically go from resistance to support and support to resistance. If you walk into your trading room and it's been trending up and stepping up and stepping up, obviously, what are you doing? You're looking for the longer trades. That's exactly right. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our indicators on here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second because I want this to stay at about this time so we can all see where the next trade is. Bear with me just a second. Sometimes when you put an indicator on, it'll change the position of the chart, and I don't want it to do that. Okay, it, it really didn't, so we're still good to go. All right, I'm going to back it up just a little bit, though, and we're going to show those two trades. Okay, everybody see that? Now, wow, that was actually red and everything on the background, but didn't it take out what we call the identified swing? You know, if you even skipped this one and went for this one, you knew this was changing trends at least for a little while when it took out the swing. Okay. Now, does this mean that this is really, you know, heading up big time? Not really, because look at that. I mean, that's pretty much still basically a downtrend on that overall chart, right? Okay. But I think you can clearly see that if you scalp this right here, for instance, let's say on the close of the bar, which would have been roughly on this one right here, okay, you would have put your stop underneath the swing and off she went. And let's just say you went for 10 ticks. That'd be plenty, right? Exactly. Okay, let's see. Scalping is a good way to build up your account. Absolutely, Walter. Scalping is a good way to build up your account because if, if you scalp, you know, in and out, you got to know where to get in, obviously, because you don't want to get two bad trades and one good one, because that'll that'll wipe out your account. But if you can see the trades in real time, you know, for instance, on this chart, where do you think the next trade is on the chart? Where did it break up? If if you draw your lightning on the chart, where where did it actually break up? Well, I see a thrust, I see a retrace, I see a thrust, I see a retrace, I see a big thrust. So if we were in the trading room, don't you think we would have been drawing like that and like that? And since this one's right at the mid band, this is more than likely going to be the one that gets it. Okay. So if you were wanting to go ahead and scalp again, let's just go ahead and see if we can. Right in through here. Okay. And let's see what happened on that, if we got a scalp on that one. exactly where we thought it would go and then off she went and gave you a pretty nice little 10 tick trade at least right and you could stick with it with lightning you know until it goes all the way up to the top if you wanted to but keep in mind <clears throat> that most trades when they get their first little thrust they usually pull back and what do they a lot of times pull back to well they pull back to where they broke out Okay, so let's see here. We kind of broke out here. We came down to here, so we haven't really tested here. Okay, what do you, what do you want to bet that that actually comes down to that line right there? What do you think? That's a swing. See, we clearly see it. We've got a thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, big thrust. So they haven't tested that, have they? Watch them. See there? That's another scalp. Think you can do 10 ticks there? 10 ticks. So there's actually 10 ticks, 10 ticks, right? When you broke down below the, the other swing, I guess it was right here. All right, so you got 10 ticks there. You got 10 ticks here, easily, and you got 10 ticks here. Right? And always be looking for where they have uh, basically not checked yet because you'll find that they're going to go down and they're going to check these swings. Does everybody see that? Because that's pretty much what they'll do. Let's see, just one sec. Question coming in from Carl. 
biggest fear is not following the background color. So at what point would be a good rule of thumb to say the background color is neutral? Well, Carl, on your question, the one thing that you're looking for on any even scalpy type trend change is where they take out these swings, you know, where they get a higher low to give an example. And they, they do their little puttering around. They can't take out the low again and they take this out. Those are pretty scalpable. But if you want to just strictly scalp in the direction of the trend, then obviously this would be your trade here, right, and here. And that would be two good scalps. And you wouldn't have taken uh, this short right here, you know, that broke down below the lightning swing. Okay? All right, let's look at it and see if we can figure out right where the next trade is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it a little bit at a time, and I want to see if everybody can figure out where the next swing is. Why won't that disappear? Come on. That is our lightning. It's not disappearing for me. What is the deal? There we go. All right. All right, let's, let's look and see if we can get the next trade. You want to? All right, I like to draw on my charts, my support and resistance. Let's just pretend we got this trade and we got this trade. All right, let's look and see what happens. Okay, when you get you another trade. Do you think that very possibly, see this, this lightning right here, let's draw it. So you have a thrust down, retrace, thrust down, retrace, thrust down, right on top of that line. Have they tested that yet? They haven't tested that yet, have they? So could you put a trade in if it happens to go down below that line and pop back up above it and then put your stop underneath the swing? You want to try that one? We haven't seen what's on the other side of the chart, so that looks pretty good to me, okay? Because you're, you're testing these swings as they come down to them. Your next one's going to be naturally, hopefully, a little higher if you're going to get any higher up here. Okay, so let's see if we can take that one. We'll take it if it closes above the line. We're in. All right. Stops right below the swing. Just like that. Or you could put it here. That's your lightning swing. Would you go, uh, let's see, would you do the bar close long? Well, Hardy, on your question, anytime on a chart, if I see that I've got resistance, to give an example, on a long that's high up enough to get me at least 10 ticks uh, and with a bar closed, but you got to be careful if, you know, for instance, if this was up here instead and it had only retraced like down into here, by the time you got a bar closed, you'd be, say, here, would you take that trade? Probably not. But if they come down to these support areas, and get these higher lows like this? Yes. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if we can get 10 ticks on that one. There's 10 ticks at least. Okay. At least 10 ticks. Now, if you're a gutsy trader, you can watch for this type of trade. See how that's hitting that resistance perfectly? You ever notice when you're trading that when they hit these medium swings like this, as a rule, they test them at least once and will usually give you a quick little pop back to the downside. Now, if you, if you don't feel comfortable with that trade, be careful with that trade because this could obviously just go up like a house of fire, but it's hitting our lips perfectly, okay? If it goes up and then rolls back down through the line, could you take that? Well, your support is right here. So let's see if it'll take this out first. We'll go here. We'll go here as support. And we'll see if we can take it out first. And we did. Okay. Now, where's your lightning on this chart right now? If you want to trade even counter trend, because you can clearly see that there's lightning on this chart right here. Right there. Now, if they break that with a close, could I very possibly get down at least to my mid band? Is that at least 10 ticks? See what I mean? Could you actually take that trade? Well, a lot of traders would probably take it if it comes back down through this line and then put their stop right up here. But if you wanted to do it with lightning instead, you could obviously do this little trade. Okay. And I've gotten to where I do this more often and I show it and I talk about it 
because I like this tray because, for instance, it's just barely taking out that top. If it comes back down and takes out lightning, then I'm pretty sure that it's going to come down and test one of these swings it hadn't tested before. Okay? And at my lowest swing, I've got one right there. I got a little micro swing right there. I got another little micro swing right here. But that's pretty much where I'm going to take the trade to begin with to the downside. So that would be my first target. That would be my second target. Or you want to just scalp it and see if we can get it. Let's just see if we can. And by the way, if you're a gutsy trader and you do want to go ahead and short this, if it comes down like a bar below this or maybe even wait for a second bar to close, if it does, you could even try that. Didn't get it yet. That would be in if you did it that way. But you're thinking, well, wait a minute, it could bounce here. Well, it could. That's why lightning is much better because remember the rule of thumb? If you can draw lightning swings and they're heading up, then you don't want to take short trades. And to me, until that takes that out, it's still heading up even on the micro side. Okay? So now the only thing is, though, if you take this trade, I would not put my stop clear up here because, see, that's way too much to give up because this is still an uptrend. So if this breaks this little spot right here, I'm only going to stick with this trade if it doesn't close back. Like, for instance, if it bounces off that line and then shoots back up through that, I'd kill it in a heartbeat. You want to try it and see? We'll see if we can scalp it. Okay, we're in. All right, we've got support. Right down there at that line. Right? That's our support right there. Now, where haven't they also checked yet? Well, they've checked here. See it? A little thrust like that area. But they haven't really checked here, have they? They haven't even checked that. You want to see if we can scalp that if it comes down there? All right. We already got our 10 ticks, so we're out of that trade too. All right. Let's see if we can get a, a bounce back to the upside if it comes down and tests support. That's a Red Bar Pro, by the way. We trade those all the time in the room, don't we? Would you have taken that trade right there? Came down to this swing instead, didn't it, right there? It hadn't tested that one either yet. So what I like to do on these Red Bar Probes, you know, we've taught these for years, even before we had the dynamic trend. This is what we call a mid-band trade or a yellow bar probe trade. First bar, you would be in right? Your stop is probably down at least below the swing, or you wait even for the red bar probe if you happen to see support. Okay, see if we can get 10 ticks on this one. You should have gotten in on this bar, or at least when it takes out mid-band. So let's see if we can get 10 ticks. That should be 10 ticks. Let's see if it is. I don't know if it quite is or not. Let's find out. All right, let's say that you even got in right there. We'll, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say you didn't get in until 2881. That's only seven ticks. Let's go ahead and see if we can stay in it. One more, one more bar. Did not get that trade. That trade was a wash. It could have gotten you a five-tick scalp. Did not get you the 10. Okay, but if you'd have gotten in here, it would have. See there, because it came down to support. Let's see, how do you get the lightning line to plot on the chart, Greg. The lightning line is uh, a hot key. Bear with me a second. I'm going to show it to you. On lightning, you have three hot keys. And Greg's new, so I'm going to take a minute and show him this because this is what webinars are for. They're support webinars. All right, lightning one, you use, you use the alt key. You simply hold the alt key down and left click your mouse at a swing. Lightning two is shift. Lightning three is control, okay? So lightning one, lightning two, lightning three, alt, shift, control, okay? So if we wanted to see lightning here, say lightning two, shift, hold, left click. Wow, that didn't work. Not sure what that did right there, but that didn't work. Let me go over here. Yeah, there's something, the data is paused or something. Let's go here and see if we can get lightning one. One thing about going back on a chart, see how much room we've got right here? Our indicators are basically designed to go back 256 bars so that we can run really fast on the charts. 
if you ever want to really go back and, and test a lot, like we're doing here, change that from 256 to infinite. Okay, and then right click and set it as your default. Set lightning two as infinite. Set it as your default. And then lightning one is infinite. And then we won't have that problem. And set it as your default. Okay. Because we've got a whole lot more than 256 bars in this little area right here that I don't have the price up to yet. Okay. So the way you get those, Greg, on your question, if you wanted lightning three to give an example, you just simply hold control in and hit the button. Okay. Left, left key left key to get rid of it okay same thing on your little uh shift here see how it worked now see how it thrust down retrace thrust down okay that's how you do that all right now what if you look at a chart like this and you say well you know what this is going pretty sideways so if this breaks this support area right here or here even could we scalp it down to Phantom, you want to try that trade and see if we can get it? Because anytime you start getting these, these red bars, you are breaking down a little bit more than normal because that's a deeper retrace. And lots of times, and we talk about it all the time, here's a high, here's a low, here's a fresher, higher high, that is our medium swing. Okay? Now, breakout trades at medium swings, you got to be careful of because a lot of times they'll barely take them out and then they'll pop back up to a resistance area and then roll over okay so sometimes it's best to actually wait for the retracement but you don't always get it because there's news and different things come out so if you want to we'll take this trade here if it breaks okay or if you're really gutsy you look at your lightning let's get rid of lightning too and put lightning one here and I see a high a low a higher high and that's an established swing right there okay now this trade I probably wouldn't take because I've got only this far to go down and possibly here at least as far as support is concerned okay that's what I was talking about earlier you want to be careful just jumping in if you've got support really close by or resistance really close by so I would probably wait on this trade till it took this out now, if this would have been here and this would have been all the way down here, I'd take that in a heartbeat because it would be breaking lightning swing. Okay. And lightning swing is pretty important because as you get these lows, highs, higher lows, higher highs, that is an established swing. So if it does take that out, it should at least head to here, then possibly to here. And then you just look to the left to trade the right and you got another swing here. Right? And then that's more than likely where it would bounce. Or here. There's another swing right down here. Okay, so let's draw those and see if we can get them. All right, so let's see. We're, we're not going to take it till here, although you could hear. But that's an area that it should hit. Looking to the left to trade the right, that's another a priori swing. And then there's one more down here at the bottom. Okay? Now let's see if we can get it. Scalp only. Not yet. Not yet. In. Okay. Now, this is one of the things about closed bars that you got to really watch because you wouldn't have been filled till right here. Okay. You can do the touch plus if you want to. You can do what I try to teach in the room too, and that's to see where it kind of oscillates around like a little consolidation patch and sell it right in the middle of it and then put your stop right above the swing okay but then you didn't know it was breaking down yet either though so to be fair on that you know just realize that you have a high here a low here a lower high here and you're looking to break down so that would be a legitimate trade for scalping now not for staying with trends okay so let's see if we can get it we didn't get filled till right here and all we want is 10 ticks so we're filled at 69 Yeah, we lucked out. Lucked out. Okay. We did luck out on that particular trade. Okay. You want to see looking to the left to trade the right. 
Would you be willing to buy if it came down here? You're saying, well, wait a minute, Gary, that's a counter trend trade. Well, yeah, but that's also a major swing right down here too. And just do it the lightning way if you don't trust it just bouncing off the line. Let's see if we can get that one. If there is one, if it comes down there. Perfect little swing kiss. Perfect little bounce. See that little bounce right there? Well, that's a phantom trade. Uh, Hardy, on your question, yes, except for the fact that it changed to the red background. That's the only thing. But would I see a trade in this? Yes, because see, you see a thrust down, a retrace, a thrust down. That's your identified swing right there at 63. Okay. Now, since we're talking about just scalping, we're not talking about really staying with as much of the trend as just scalping lightning. Okay, so we're going to box that in. We're going to take that trade if it goes up above that box. We're in. Okay, we're only caring about 10 ticks. All right, if we got in on the close of the bar, we would have gotten in at like 68. I like to kind of get in when it breaks the box by a couple of ticks, but that's up to you if you want to wait for the, the break of the bar or use a smaller bar. All right, so let's say you're in at 68. We're going to try to get... Uh, 10 ticks. Sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy-one, seventy-six. 69, 71, 76. There you go. Just got 10 ticks. Okay. So see, you can box in at these lightning swings. They actually do work. But remember, to always make sure that they're identified or they're bouncing off of a good level of support or off of a good level of resistance. Because if you look at this swing right here, and we're going to go over for just a few minutes, why is that swing important? Because it's an identified swing, isn't it? If you draw your lightning up here, you can clearly see that's a thrust down, retrace, thrust down. When this took this swing out right here with the close of the bar, that's an identified swing, okay? So could you trust that trade as far as a little breakout trade? Yes, but be careful and only scalp those because you're going against the trend when you do it a lot of times, okay? You want to see if we can just do this several times on several trades? We'll find out. Okay, we already got our 10 ticks. Now let's draw our resistance and our support. All right, because I see resistance right up here at 89. See your thrust, retrace thrust. All right, I see resistance at, well, they've already taken out 78. That's your resistance right there. Okay, if you were going to short this, okay, you can do the lightning way. So you'd simply put a cell in under here. All right, or you'd put a sell in if it happens to hit resistance up in here because see this is a red background now and you do have the phantom that you haven't gotten yet. So let's see if we can get a lightning trade. We'll either go in on a lightning break. Okay, where's lightning on this chart? It's right there. That's your identified swing because it did close above that little swing right there. Okay? Everybody see that? You can see the swing because lightning draws it for you right there, isn't it? So, now I'm kind of a little bit more of a gutsy trader. So if it comes close to this and rolls over, let's see if it does. I'm going to take it right there myself, okay, because it hit resistance. And see, that's a... If you draw on your charts, you can clearly see with your eyes and with your indicator. That's a pretty major little swing, isn't it? See? That's really what it's done right there. And if you draw it with Lightning 3, you're going to see that exact thing to begin with. That's why we designed Lightning 3 and Lightning 2 and Lightning 1. Just go ahead and do Lightning 3. See there? Same thing I was drawing. Okay? So I'm in here. I'm going to try to get 10 ticks. 
we're going to we're going to take this little break if it happens to break it and see if we can get even 10 more okay i like these resistance kisses though i mean we would have called that trade live in the room right there i would have drawn on that chart you know i would and we would have gone for that trade that's a line six trade it's a beautiful trade it's between six and seven which is your phantom type trade and we're in it we got 10 ticks more than likely right there okay let's see if you could get 10 ticks on breaking lightning because you got filled right here okay at like 78 you think it'll get down to 68 we'll find out got down to 69 Now, what could you do on this little trade right here if you didn't want to give up and you didn't quite get down to your to your target? Well, you did get a scalp, even taking the little lightning trade, didn't you? Okay, but you didn't get your 10 ticks. So what you want to do in a case like that is more than likely if you've got one of these little wicks that's higher than the other one, I would put exit on close on that and probably if it came up through it, that didn't yet. That did then to get out of the trade but see if you got in at resistance that was a better trade and the way we teach it let me get rid of lightning again doesn't want to get rid of there we go and I'll get rid of lightning three all right this little patch right here you can also box in because this happens a lot where a candle goes up candle goes down candle goes up candle goes down so can't you actually do that and take that trade or rather than waiting for it to break this swing could you raise it up a little bit like this swing here you know you'd be amazed how just this little bit could make a difference let's say you got filled at 70 uh, what is that 78 instead and well it came down to 69 and still so you still didn't get your 10 ticks on that one okay now what does everybody think about a little bit of scalping so far do you like the idea of scalping? Because if you look at these markets, you're going to find out that most times when you get in a trade, they're going to break down or break up, and then they're going to pull right back to where you got in. And that's one of the most irritating things in the world is to have four contracts on, be up 400, 440, 480, and then back to zero. Don't let it do that to you. Okay? What you want to do is you want to peel some, when you get those little scalps. Yeah, Dennis says he likes scalping. We, we've got a lot of people that like scalping. Scalping is a good way to trade. Okay? And if you, if you don't want to trade against the trend, then just simply watch for red backgrounds, mid-band colors to be short, and only short these little areas. Now, you will miss out on some of these great trades like this down here that we did take because it took out this a priori swing here at 66. Was that a decent trade? Yes. Would you have had to take it at 66? No. You could have waited for it to thrust up above mid-band, boxed it in like we always teach, and you would have still gotten 10 ticks on that trade. You'd have gotten filled right there. Okay, so you don't have to just say, well, I'm going to take the, the first break candle, because a lot of times they'll break it and then they'll just slam it, especially if you're going counter trend. But one of the reasons that we like to box in around these mid bands is because this mid band indicator is pretty much telling you which side of the trade you really want to be on. Okay. Let's see. I find that scalping is, is working really well in these recent markets when they quickly change trends to the downside. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Any questions so far on any of this? Okay, now we've already gotten a short on this one. You want to see if we can get another short? To get another short, we're going to have to go up there and at least test this swing here. They haven't tested. See it right there? Thrust, retrace, thrust. See this right here? They tested that. Notice that they just came within like a tick or so. See it? So always drop down to look into the left to trade the right on your lightning and watch them hit that almost to the tick, probably to the tick. See there? 
And then if you want to short this silly thing, you know, if it's holding resistance and, you know, we're seeing that it's going sideways like this, where's your target on this? Well, let's see where they haven't tested. They've tested here, came right across here tested here they broke down below here so they tested here again okay so here is a swing right across here that'd be your first scalp here is another one right there just barely see it thrust retrace little lightning swing and then of course right down here and looking to the left to trade the right saying well Thrust, retrace, thrust. They haven't really tested here either. So that's really close. So I'd probably put two lines and pretty much figure that they're going to bounce right in through here. Everybody see how I deducted that right there on that chart? And looking to the left to trade the right, that's also an a priori swing that they tested once here. They haven't tested here. So I'm going to draw two lines. Let's see, trust it here, trust it here. Yeah, 70. Okay, and let's see if we can get it. We got a short. Got our 10 ticks. Okay, everybody see that? You got your 10 ticks. Now, if you're a gutsy trader and you want to box in, this is one of my favorite type of trades that sets up. You can see it if you draw in lightning right here. See that swing right there? Notice how it's higher low so far. Well, we don't know for sure if it's breaking down. So I would put, you know, a sell in more than likely underneath here. Okay. If they break this, just in case they come down here. And I'd put a buy in on a little consolidation patch like that. They practically give you these consolidation patches, don't they? So with Object Trader, I'd probably be going long right here and short right there. See which one we get. Didn't close above yet. Didn't close above yet. Didn't close above yet. See it right across there? Now, usually when I get this type of thing going on, you got to be careful because if you get a wick like that, sometimes you want to go ahead and change your object trader box like that so that they don't accidentally close above the first one you had. Instead, they've already tested here. Okay, so let's see if, if we break here, then obviously we're going to head up to here. Same spot as there or here. So let's see if we can get that. We're in. Target is feeling a little bit of heat on that one. Where's our swing, though? That's our lightning swing right there. Okay. Stop's going to have to be under the lightning swing right there. you got to trust lightning. How much of a stop is that? Well, let's see here. If you got filled on that bar, you probably got filled at 79, so that's a good 10 ticks. That's reasonable. All right, let's see if we can go ahead and get up to that line. There you go. You got your first target. See it right there. We draw those in the room all the time. Next target is where? Right there. Let's see if we can get it. Got it. Okay. Now, what do you do if you've got a contract left? Stay with the trade, right? Where's lightning on this chart? Well, they haven't closed above here. That makes me a little more nervous when I get a wick, but let's see if they did a dragonfly on that. Uh, can't tell, but it looks like it. Yeah, because the peak's there. So that's a dragonfly doji, so it did close above here. So my swing is right here. So you got in above the little box that we had drawn a minute ago, right? It felt a little bit of heat, and we got our targets. Now we put our stop for our runner right under there with close of the bar. Didn't get us. Came pretty close, didn't it? And where would your stop continually be on this chart? 
at lightning. See there, high, low, higher high. That's definitely a lightning identified swing. Identified swings is the key to trading because if you're going up, you're going to get higher lows and higher highs, obviously. If you start getting a, a low here and then a lower low, do you want to stick with that trade? No. But you do want to stick with that trade if it's making higher lows and higher highs. And watch how long you can stick with them sometimes. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and fix this. Like Charles always says, fix your charts, Gary. Okay. I will. Dragonfly Doji again. Where do you think this trade will more than likely come back and kiss? Draw two lines. Two swings. High, low, higher, high, higher, low. This one's way up here. So could you be ready if that comes down there and kisses that swing right there? To very possibly get in a trade. Now we may not get it. That's fine if we don't. Let's see if we do though. Because I'd be ready to add if it does. Right between the lines. Right between the lines. You, get, you did get stopped out on the rest of your trade though, by the way, because they took out your swing the way we like to trade. Okay. But where's your next trade on this chart? They clearly took out support. Where can they not take out and continue heading up? Everybody should see that because you can clearly see the swing on this chart. We do these live in the room all the time. High, low, much higher high. This is what I call your a stronger swing. It's still your micro swing because this literally went up, up, up. But what do you think will happen if they come back on this? They're more than likely going to test this but they're not going to take it out, are they? You want to see? You know, you, you see charts for thousands of hours, and you see these all the time. Look at that. Right on the money on that swing, could you add contract right there if you happen to have still stayed in with lightning? Now, this lightning, you probably wouldn't have stayed in because that was way too much of a pullback. So when this started doing this double pullback and it took out support here, I'd probably killed it anyway. But you can get back in. Would you get back in here? Well, if you did, your first target's right there. Second target is, yeah, that's not what I call a swing there. That one's a little bit better. See it? Trust, retrace. That's only two bars there. I don't trust them as much. And then right here. So let's see if we can get it. Now, this one we did a runner on, did pretty good. But let's just pretend we just got 10 ticks. We're going to go for 10 ticks again. Okay, we got in like 28, 90. Now let's just give it two even for the fun of it. See if we can get a trade. That's 96. Back to 90. 98. We need 102. There it is. There's 10 ticks. Bingo. Got you a trade. Okay. Now you remember in oil this morning where we got a nice short trade also. Do you know why we got that nice short trade on there? Because we looked at what we call medium swings. You got to get in the habit of looking at medium swings. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit so we can see a medium swing. Because I remember it was about 8.30, so we got a little bit of time. Go ahead and get rid of lightning because I see another trade setting up. Let's get rid of our lines. Sometimes the trees for the forest, if you don't even want to see predictor, take it off for a minute. Let's see where we, we should pull down on here. What do you think? 96? Let's draw a line. Looking to the left to trade the right. That is an identified swing. All right. I look straight over to the left and I see where's my next swing, even if it's micro. So I draw a line right here. See it right there. So I draw another line and that's looking to the left to trade the right. So anywhere between those two lines, we should get a bounce. Let's see if we can get another scalp. There's between the two lines. Bar up, I'm in. Boy, look at that bounce right off of right off that second line that I drew. 
we're in. Feeling a little bit of heat. Just got 10 ticks, looks like to me. Let's go for one more. There's 10 ticks for sure. And looking to the left to trade the right, that would be a pretty good place to take some profit at 2908, right? You want to see? There it is, 2908. Now, if you're in multiples, where's your lightning swing on this chart? It's right there. Got another swing right here at 11. And that's making me nervous, but it did bounce off of it, so we're okay. That's still going to be your stop right there. It came almost to that swing. That's a lower high. Out. So if you got in here, you got a nice 10 tick trade, you almost got a runner, didn't quite get a runner. Or if you're one of those that's likes to take your coin at a priori swings, you could have taken it here or here. You don't have to stay in these trades because what did I say earlier? You get in a trade, you get $400. Let's face it, if you were in oil with four contracts, that would be easily $480 or more, right? And all the way back to where you got in. Okay? That's why scalping can be quite pleasurable. Okay? Where's your swing on this chart? That's what I call a, a medium swing. All right, here's one right here. Here's one right here. This one is identified high, low, barely higher high. I don't count that one. It just barely took it out. That definitely counts. Okay, so that's a medium swing that I would be watching for. Now, if this breaks this swing right here, though, more than likely I'd short this thing. Okay, especially at the open of the market. Let me show you why, because we did this trade. I remember it now. We're going to put uh, regions on it. Let's go ahead and put 831 for today. I've already got mine set up for tomorrow. And 832. Bear with it a second. Hopefully it'll load. All right. Where was Band-Aid? That trade was taken at Band-Aid right there. A little on the gutsy side, obviously, but if you keep in mind that this was pretty much an identified swing right here, see how you have a, a low, a high, a higher low, a higher high, you know, maybe under there even, if you don't trust the this. This is pretty much an identified swing, okay? So if you did happen to short that, and, and Charles and I even talked about boxing it in, or if you even short it here, it just broke it right there. All right, it broke it with the close of the bar, so you would be in with Object Trader, right? And there's easily a 10 tick trade, wouldn't you say? Scalping the market. Keep in mind at the open of the market, you don't want to just scalp. You want to at least leave that one runner on and then trade with Lightning. Let's see if we can stay with this trade. Let's say we had three contracts that we've already taken profit on. So we got $300. We got one more contract that we're writing for the gusto. Where's your lightning swing on this chart right here? It's not really what I call lightning because it's only the, the little three bar like that. So remember we had our stop just above here, okay? And if you didn't want this to stop you out, then you got to use like this line two or something. But this particular trade, if you did happen to get stopped out on lightning, where would be another entry on this chart? When it rolls over. See, it rolled over right there. Pretty good trade, huh? But see how you can look and see, look into the left to trade the right. You know, when they do these little bitty micros like this, sometimes you can't trust this one. You like these ones where they do a little bit more of a thrust, retrace thrust, and give a little bit more of a zigzag. This is not what I call a zigzag right here. I'll draw it with lightning and I'll show you. We'll draw it from here. See that? You've got a low, a high, 
a lower low, a lower high, and a lower low. And what do they do? They practically wick that. But a lot of times to protect your profit, go ahead and protect your profit there. Okay, because when it closed above it, you didn't know if it was going to here, looking to the left to trade the right. You didn't know if it was going all the way back here because that's where it broke down. So to get out and get back in is not a bad idea. Okay. And by the way, then instead of being with one contract here again, you can be with your two, you know, you might not go with all three or four, like at the open where the band aid was, but you get in on the rollover. All right. And then look what a trade that turned out to be. Now, could you be scalping this one even as it's going on its little trek down? Yeah, absolutely you could because you just look for those little pullbacks and get those rollover bars. I actually called this one in the room this morning. I remember it because for people that had gotten stopped out right here, let me get rid of lightning and I'll show it. where it kind of came up here, bar down, bar up, bar down. Well, when it started breaking this little area right here, see it right there where it broke it? Look where it came back and kissed and rolled over. It's amazing. Even on these little bitty micro moves, they'll usually check them, and then they'll roll over. Then this came awful close to checking there. See it? See where it broke down? It tried to retrace to it. This was another trade that we even mentioned. If you want to take the rollover bar, that's a rollover bar right there. And your resistance is here, so you know you could have easily had your stop right up there on that little swing, and then you got you another move. Okay, but they they do this continually. See where they even broke down below here. Even with one bar, they came back and kissed it and rolled over. So if you walk in a room and you see this happening, and they take out support, and then they kiss it as resistance, that's not a very risky trade. Okay. Now, when it starts breaking lightning like this, then you're looking for what? You're looking for a pullback. All right, so looking to the left to trade the right. What are we looking for? See if we can get another trade. Because we're, in my opinion, you would be taken out right here if you wanted to be. Now, if you use the mid band, which I don't use the mid band on my trades, you can do that on NASDAQ if you want. But truthfully, on something like uh, oil at $10 a tick, I'm not going to take a contract and let them have 30 ticks back. Just not going to do it. All right, so looking to the left to trade the right. Where have we checked? Okay, we've got a swing at 66. That's a line five trade. All right, we've got a swing, thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace. So let's draw some resistance areas. There's one right there. That's perfectly at mid band, by the way. And there's one right there. All right, so I'd be looking for a trade between those two lines for a rollover. See if we can get it. Mid band's a beautiful trade, by the way. You can get them a lot of times. There's your mid band trade right there. See if we've got any more a priori that they could check. Now they got one at 64, but that's way over here. I'd take that trade right there, truthfully, and we called that in the room this morning. Called it on that bar right. Oop, sorry about that. Didn't mean to do that. Bear with me. I'll go back. Get back over here. That was 8.30 something right there. All right. We called it on the bar that rolled down, which was right there. I called it in the room. It hit our line perfectly. I had the line drawn. We got filled here. We felt a little bit of heat, but it rolled over. Now, if you don't like to just take it at a line, you can clearly see that you can take it with lightning. Draw your lightning swings. You got a high, you got a low, you got a higher high. You got a lower one here. You came same high here. Could you take that trade right there on a break? Or even better yet, when it breaks and kisses? See that trade right there? See how that broke that support right there at 56 by 10 ticks or so, and it comes back and kisses it. Okay? But we called the trade here, and some people even added when it came up here. And that's the trade we got. Monster little trade, wasn't it? Okay. Now, one other one that I want you to be aware of is these ellipses are really important too. Okay, because you can scalp them. All right, and I'm going to wrap in just a moment because we're, we're right at 8 o'clock.
Okay, let's say that you've missed every trade that we've done this, this uh, webinar so far, and you want to just simply do a scalp for the morning. Well, that ellipse is pretty much setting it up for you right there, and I see lightning, thrust, retrace, draw your lightning. So you've got a high, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. Okay, so that's your identified lightning right across here. Okay, so let's see what it does. There's your other identified swing right there. This swing right here has been taken out. That's what we call our micro swing. And if you get a rollover in through here, could you do it on what we call lightning? Draw your lightning and see. There's lightning swing right there. That's 40. That's down to 31. I'd probably still take that trade because that's almost nine ticks. So let's just take it if it breaks it or if it does a little lightning swing, either way. There's a little lightning swing, so it'll give us a little bit better advantage, 41. Okay, we didn't get in on the close of the bar. Still not in. Now, when they do this stuff like this, I love this particular trade, because you know what I would do? And I talk about this in the room all the time. Measure it. 41. To 52, that's 11 ticks. Five ticks right in the middle of it would be 47. So if it hit 47, I'd short it. And I put my stop above here. So let's see if we can do that. We're going to short 47. We're in. And we got 10 ticks. Everybody see why I did that? Because when they're consolidating like this, they're going to either break one way or the other. And this was a downtrend. So, you know, selling it right in the middle of that works quite nicely, by the way. I called that in the room today on Russell. Uh, matter of fact, I got a trade on Russell where it did the same thing. And rather than taking the breakout trade, which would have got me in here, I split the difference. Because then if they broke this, I'd be out of the trade and I wouldn't feel but about six or seven ticks of heat possibly. And if they broke this, I'd probably try to get up to here, which would have given me another 10 ticks to the upside because I would have taken the trade if it happened to have broken this, if it didn't do what I wanted it to do. All right. What does everybody think about trying to do a little bit of scalping? What do you think this trade's going to do right here? It's coming right back to resistance right there and watch it roll over. See there? They take out support, they come back and kiss it as resistance. That's what the markets do. And if you learn to see that on your charts, you can scalp these things all day long, okay? And if you get good enough at it, like some of our people that do five and 10 contracts, $5,000 a day would not be impossible, okay? Because the trades that we just talked about just here in the room just now probably equaled somewhere around, well, let's just give it a, a low end even, a good $2,000, okay? And that's plenty for anybody for a day. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. We're going to do um, oil inventory tomorrow. And remember, when you're looking at your charts and also when you're sitting down to dinner, if, if your uh, wife or husband or whoever serves you an elephant, start a bite at a time. You can't devour the whole thing. OK, learn that you can't just like my son said uh, a year and a half ago or better when I started teaching him. He said, Dad, it's like drinking through a fire hose. I said, then turn it down and drink sips. Learn these first little things and don't try to just drain the fire hose because it'll drown you. There's a lot that are on these charts. And if you take them too much at a time, they can swamp anybody's brain. But the more you learn it, the more that muscle memory kicks in. And you'll see these trades in real time. And a trade like that could be easily a $500 bill, a trade like that could be a $500 bill, a trade like that could be 500, a trade like that could be, that could be, you see what I mean? They're all over the place. All you got to do is learn to see where they thrust below, retrace back to a swing area. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great evening. Sorry I ran over about six minutes. This will be posted in about the next 30 minutes. Good night.